just as important as the current theme. So when I say that Hope Springs Eternal Reconnecting and Reinventing Through the Arts, I'm also, of course, referencing the fact that everyone deserves that chance. And when we are able to put ourselves into a better place, then it's important that we look around and see who else needs help. Um, so here's the slide I mentioned where I can let you gather some things. Um, you would want to have tools for recording your ideas. I am going to take you through a series of questions and prompts. So you may want to have um, something to write with. You don't have to. It's really, this is your experience. You can make it what you want. Um, if you're in a class and your professor has assigned this as an assignment, then you know, you can record as your professor asked you to, um, as far as your participation goes. If you choose to make art in response, um, you may want to begin to consider what materials you would use. I'm going to talk about several different collage mosaic artists in that use through their art the process of putting pieces back together. So you may get inspired to look at different materials once you see what they do. Um, if you want to record your responses instead of write them down, if you want to audio or video record, um, whatever your preference is, and you can repeat this process as often as you need to. Repeat, repeat, repeat. So I do this in a mini version in a journal each week so that I can keep it. And that's Again, this is for you, so you decide what's right for you. So we are, again, just reminding you that I'm trying to get us into a space where we're choosing not to know and to hope. And so I'm just going to give you a series of questions here in the next few slides to think about this not knowing piece, because we've been in this space for over two years now. So did you sometimes feel like you were part of a movie where the ending seemed clear until it didn't? So this is something that I think a lot about that um, we at various times during this process thought we knew where we were going and then we didn't. <laughs> we thought when the vaccines came, this is going to be something. We thought many different times, and there were many things going on other than COVID as well. There was in our own city, the um, murder of Breonna Taylor, and then there were things going on all over the country. So, and then we had the election. <laughs> so we had a lot going on. And we often thought we were getting to a place of resolution, and then we weren't. And I think many of us now kind of feel this sense of flow where we get more and more comfortable with the idea that we don't know. So I love this Linda Berry cartoon. If you don't know Linda Berry's cartoons, um, you can see her name is in there, Linda Berry, L-Y-N-D-A-B-A-R-R-Y. This is one of her cartoons from 1988. It just remains one of my favorites. And I thought a lot about this cartoon for the last several years because of the nature of what she's describing here. Uh, my brother found a picture of our mom and dad in a box. It's of them um, be from before us, them standing by some water and laughing. You can see how my dad's brand is Lucky Strikes. And for those of you who and behind him there's flowers and a blue car. You can see my mom in a yellow dress and her purse is open. And she has her mouth like my dad just told her another great joke. You can see how it's a long time ago. My brother invented this thing where if you put a magnifying glass on the picture, hold it just right and shake it, 
it can look like they are moving, like it's an underwater TV show where time can secretly come back to life. He said this was our home movies like they show over at his normal friend's house up the street, and we both start laughing at that. Then our mom walked in and asked, what are you doing? And my brother covered the picture and said, nothing, mom, nothing. So I just love the, the, some of the images there that come to mind for me when I think about time. Um, underwater TV show where time can secretly come back to life. I think a lot of the time I've spent over these last few years, I've thought a lot about that sort of thing and how it would be if life was ever that way again. <laughs> so I, I thought about this cartoon a lot, so I thought I would share it. So when we talk about everything that happened and going on and our own responses. I just want to remind us that what we've experienced is what psychologists call toxic stress, which is not like regular stress <laughs> at all. We all know this. I, sh I don't need to even say that. Uh, but toxic stress, the nature of it is that it doesn't let up. And so it has a very different effect on the body, on your mind, on your soul, on your spirit and every part of you. So I'd like to play this little video about empathy and what empathy really is when you're relating to one another about these kinds of experiences. Hi, I'm John Fiorentino, inventor of the Moon Pod, the most comfortable beanbag on the planet. The first beanbag was created <laughs> So what is empathy and why is it very different than sympathy? Empathy fuels connection. Sympathy drives disconnection. Empathy, it's, a, it's very interesting. Teresa Wiseman is a nursing scholar who studied professions, very diverse professions where empathy is relevant and came up with four qualities of empathy. Perspective taking, the ability to take the perspective of another person or, or recognize that perspective is their truth. Staying out of judgment, not easy when you enjoy it as much as most of us do. <laughs> Recognizing emotion in other people and then communicating that. Empathy is feeling with people. And to me, I always think of empathy as this kind of sacred space when someone's kind of in a deep hole and they shout out from the bottom and they say, I'm stuck, it's dark, I'm overwhelmed. And then we look and we say, hey, I'm down. I know what it's like down here and you're not alone. Sympathy is, ooh, it's bad, uh-huh. Uh, no, you want a sandwich? Um, empathy is a choice and it's a vulnerable choice because in order to connect with you, I have to connect with something in myself that knows that feeling. Rarely, if ever, does an empathic response begin with at least. I had a, yeah. And we do it all the time because you know what? Someone just shared something with us that's incredibly painful and we're trying to silver lining it. I don't think that's a verb, but I'm using it as one. We're trying to put the silver lining around it. So I had a miscarriage. At least you know you can get pregnant. I think my marriage is falling apart. At least you have. John's getting kicked out of school. At least Sarah is an A student. But one of the things we do sometimes in the face of very difficult conversations is we try to make things better. If I share something with
Should we start it over from the middle? Michelle, do you want to restart it from where it left off? Do you want me to start it over? quote at the end, but I'm going to play the little, I think these little videos are maybe a minute at the most. <laughs> so let's see. Okay, so that was bell hooks, knowing. How to be with others. I'm just giving you a moment to think about that one. 
how to be with others without using them as a way to escape our own needs and feelings and pain. That's a pretty challenging idea. So Grace Lee Boggs, another amazing person. If you don't know these folks, um, I highly recommend that you check them out. <laughs> Grace Lee Boggs. <laughs> The only way to survive is by taking care of one another. Nabi Nugja, and I'll let you. And the last one comes from someone most people know, Maya Angelou, but I love this particular quote as well when we think about self-care. Discover you have two hands, one for helping yourself, the other for helping others. So we, you know, have gone through these little quotes and I hope it's giving you a moment to pause and think about not silver lining your own circumstances for yourself, being honest about what's happening for you and still understanding that we can be hopeful because we don't know how things will continue to flow, and then recognizing the need for caring for ourselves. And I did want to include these in case you would like to use any of these quotes or quotes from other individuals, quotes from people you know yourself that you may want to incorporate into your artwork. So how have you taken care of yourself and others over these past years during periods where we were uncertain and times when it seemed like we would, again, have a resolution and then not have a resolution? Um, I just think even about my grandsons and how many times we stopped and started homeschooling. <laughs> so just that one aspect of life at that time helps me frame how unpredictable everything became. And, you know, there were days when someone would, from the family would have been exposed to COVID, so he would have to go home. And, you know, it just, and we had it very, very easy because we had a home, we had plenty of resources, we have health insurance, and we found it was up and down and all over the place. And we knew we had it very well. We had good circumstances. So now that we do know we don't know, <laughs> I have a question about how then shall we live? What is this going to end up meaning? We're just in this tiny little, tiny little seedling stage of looking at this. So I'm really not expecting answers. Um, maybe you have made some answers for yourself and you may want to incorporate those, incorporate, excuse me, those into your artwork as well. So let's look at some questions about that. What has been there for you? So what has life been like for you? Have you lost a job, gained a job, had a child, um, had your children at home, <laughs> um, had other people's children in your home. Um, you know, what has life been like for you? Let's just take a moment and say, what are all the different things that have happened? You might even want to jot these down in order or out of order. Some people find it easier actually to go backwards and start with what happened most recently and then go back all the way to 
For me, it would be when the college decided to shut down. Um, that's the day everything really changed for me. And if I go backwards over that period until that date, I also find that I've landed on the date that Breonna Taylor's murder was um, made public. So there's a, a lot going on at that time that I'm unraveling too. Some people may find it easier to start with that time when you first felt the impact of everything that was about to unfold and then what happened as it unfolded. So just take a moment, you can, again, you can go through this at a later time or you can, I just can't promise that you can pause this. <laughs> um, I don't know if that's how it will work the day of um, because I'll be playing the recording and I don't know if you'll be able to go back in and watch it yourself after it's been presented, but I will make it available so you can pause or just go through the slides. What's been missing? So take a moment to consider during this whole period we said what's been there, now we're asking what's missing. So if I go back to what's been there, something that was there every day was that my husband and I were working from home and we were, again, very blessed to be able to do that. And we had plenty of resources to do that. We had jobs that let us do that. Um, but we were very aware of the people delivering things to us and how that wasn't happening for them. And I thought a lot about what was missing for them. And that really troubled me the whole time. We had signs on our door to them and we left them things. It just really occurred to me how much they were missing. And that caused me to feel like things were not right. So it may not even be something you were missing, but that you could see that other people were missing. What's been lost? Who has been lost? Most of us know somebody who either was very sick or changed by having COVID, for example, or was hurt in the protests that they participated in or lost jobs. People were lost to them because they no longer saw those people at work. There were lots of things that we might think of as being lost, but we talk about what's been found, what's been lost. But we need to acknowledge the level of death that was we were surrounded by. And through this whole time, I kept coming back to this quote from Tom Robbins, who's a great author. If you have not read his work. Death is impatient and thoughtless. It barges into your room when you're right in the middle of something, and it doesn't bother to wipe its boots. So for me, this really captured a lot about, you know, these daily updates we were getting and the constant conversation about the threat of death and not knowing, again, not knowing. And I want to show you another um, piece that really spoke to me during this time, and it's a book by the author and illustrator Anastasia Higginbotham, whose work I'm going to talk to you more about in a minute. She has a book called Death is Stupid. And I continue to read that book a lot and think about that. And here's a beautiful picture she was generous enough to send me um, to share with you. And I also have some other pieces I'll share with you that are hers. And you can see the torn paper, the pen and ink, and there's collage in the background. And this is the portrayal of a deep love, someone who has died. You can see this devotion. And for many people, that person was lost during this time. Many children lost those people during this time. So this is another piece I would recommend to you, Death is Stupid. And the book is all incredible art and collage. So I'm going to show you that in a moment. 
And then I'm also sharing with you, this is sort of a lighter, kind of funny <laughs> piece that someone shared. Um, this artwork, Crayola marker on wooden closet door. So this is the artwork of a child um, drawing a wrestling match. <laughs> and critics agree that Wrestlers in Action is a thought-provoking composition, challenging the viewer to reflect on their own emotions, stemming from being a prisoner in their own home during a toilet paper shortage. So I felt like I saw that and friend shared that. I thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> and I think humor is something that hopefully we can bring to this as well. And again, another humorous, but sad and honest, no silver linings to coronavirus. You destroyed my birthday. You are the F word. <laughs> so uh, for me, I could put that on a t-shirt. Uh, I've seen the aftermath of what's happened for children who feel they were denied things. So again, losses and no silver lining it. Just this is what it is. So how can we retrieve one another? How can we find one another again? What's been found during this time? What did we rediscover? What did we never know but found out? You can take a moment just to make some notes. Again, you may even want to start thinking, oh, there's a photograph I want to put on this collage because it represents an answer to this question. Um, so you don't have to confine yourself to the written word or the spoken word or the videotaped word. <laughs> you can also start thinking about, oh, yeah, there's, a, there's something I want to make sure I put in there and I've got a picture of it I want to incorporate. Um, I love this quote for sort of insp inspiring what we mean when we say things are found by this poet. Again, another poet, if you don't know this poet, just Google the name and you will not be sorry. Things that should be asked often in every type of relationship. How is your heart? Is your breath happy here? Do you feel free? So for me, this poem really sums up this idea of discovery and finding. What brings those feelings to you? So in the artistic world, since this is the Unity Through Arts Festival, <laughs> uh, the practices of mosaic and collage are all about putting together pieces. And so I'm gonna have, um, have us go through a few artists that practice this and use it in their processes. And I'm discussing with you how this practice could be used to to do a put together yourself portrait, <laughs> um, imagining how you can reinvent and reimagine, not just yourself, but the, the communities. We're not gonna silver lining it. We're not gonna call it a golden opportunity. We're gonna say, this is what happened. And we must find the pieces of ourselves and begin to reshape them. Because in this way, we just don't know, but we can trust ourselves and each other to find out. And I feel like that is an act of hope. So on to the self and the putting yourself back together part self-portrait. Um, you've got some prompts and I'm going to go through a few more. You want to have on hand some tools if you want to try to draw this. So if you want to try to draw a face, and I encourage you to do it, and nobody's going to see it. <laughs> even, if you, even if your final work is seen, you will be making art around it and with it. So I hope you'll go ahead and give it a try. And always acknowledge that's frightening. Thank you. <laughs> yes, I know for some people it's not okay. I do have a student in my FYE course this semester who has done an amazing video of how to do this in her presentation assignment. So I realized not everybody is afraid of this process. So 
if you are not, embrace it. I love it. But I also love it if you're afraid. For me, not the most fun process, but I've done it many times now. So I encourage you to give it a try. And again, in the, um, the daily list of these courses, you'll see there's a um, attachment with these two slides in it so you can practice drawing a face. So you're drawing four lines equally spaced. And I always recommend using some kind of a straight edge, a ruler if you have one, but if not, something that will allow you to make these four lines pretty straight. Then you're going to draw a line down the center. And then as you can see, this head is oval and you can kind of see where it goes to the bottom down here and then comes up over about halfway up here. And if you look at the oval A, B, C, you can see here's your eyebrows on this line, your tip of your nose on this line, and then just a ways down is the line where your mouth would be. And then you can go to the next slide and see where the tip of your ears are. Your eyes are in there now. Your mouth is a little more fully drawn. You can see the space where your nose comes there. And before you know it, you have, well, you have oval shaped ears. Here's your neck. Okay, this begins behind the ears. You can add hair. You also see here the bottom of the nose is in line with the bottom of the ears. You notice this line right here helps you with that. So just have fun with it. Uh, try not to be too hard on yourself. Because <laughs> remember, you're going to make something with it. So here we go. Here's this collage portion of the presentation. This is a collage done by a six-year-old. Uh, painted the first drew the face, then painted it. Use some block printing here. You can see there, got some prints in there. You've got collage pieces glued down. Notice you really can't see the face much anymore, except that then this child went ahead and did a Sharpie marker over it, not caring at all. <laughs> um, and a piece of clear contact paper had items adhered to the back of it and then was placed down on top of the painting and the drawing of the face. And then you can see there's these two little ninjas here. So this is a child drawing um, a COVID response. This is, a, this is a, not the same process you're doing, but it's the same kinds of things incorporated. And of these two ninjas here. I think that's great. So you can get to see it a little closer. You can see all the different elements in it. And you notice these two ninjas fighting COVID. This was something that was described to me about this. And then I'm going to introduce you to this artist, Sarah Bunn, who's a textile artist. She creates photo collages. And this was before COVID. Um, and here's a video that she created to describe her putting herself back together process. Hi, my name is Sarah Bunn. And I have to say that the very first thing I remember that I think makes me think about who I am now is I was adopted by a family and that family kind of, I always felt I didn't belong and that I was always being stifled and that I was told to sit in the corner and that I was told to be quiet. And the minute I was free, I was always very outgoing and blossoming and energetic. And I'm now realizing at the age of 60, and I had been stifled, and I am stifled no more. I am now who I am, real authentic me doing what I want. 
too. And I think that says it in a nutshell. Okay, so I'm going to show you some of her work. Um, it's quite powerful. This is a dress she sewed, and you can see this is in response to, um, I believe this piece was created in response to the death of Michael Brown in St. Louis. And you can see this hands up pose that she made, and then here's, she's incorporated this photograph of Dr. King, and you can't see it, but around the dress there are other photos, so it's a photo collage that's in, sewn into the dress. Um, I think very powerful use of collage and photos there. And here is another, you can see this incredible collage of words that she's got in this dress and names all over. Just remarkable. She was inspired, you can see the painting the shoes of the little girl and the painting by Leroy Campbell who's an artist a uh, visual artist also another amazing artist to check out so but I think this use of photo collages sewn into pieces that are meant to be worn is very unusual and interesting so I thought I would share that with you as another way you might present your own process. And now I'd like to share, as I mentioned, author and um, artist, illustrator Anastasia Higginbotham, whose books here are pictured. Uh, these are children's books, part of a series called Ordinary Terrible Things. And um, again, those will be linked in the resources for the presentation. And if you notice, every cover of these books is collaged. And I'm going to go into, because she's been so generous, I always tell her she's so generous with teachers uh, who, to give us access to her process and materials and sharing. So I want to honor and appreciate that in this moment. And if you're interested in more information about these books, um, Anastasia, is generous in, in conversation as well. And we have some recorded conversations you could listen to if you wanted to go into more depth about her work. And I would encourage you to do so. So here is a photograph Anastasia sent me um, of some of her materials that you may be also gathering now. Here's some more of these same pieces. I am not going to describe what these are because I feel like that should be the artist's role. So if we want Anastasia to the college to go into more depth, I hope we will. But I did want to show some of the pieces that she has shared. This is um, a spirograph. It's an old fashioned tool for drawing that many of you, some of you may remember actually, but you can Google Spirograph and find out how to use that and incorporate that. So you don't have to limit yourself to any specific art form in a collage. These are all Spirograph drawings that are included in her book. Um, you ruined it. So I would encourage you to look at the book, but also just think about other ways of incorporating other art forms into your collage that might be helpful for you. And here are some photographs from her children's books. And she describes her collage work and, as something she started doing when she was a child. And she talked about these being almost like paper dolls. So again, I'm not going to go in depth about that. I would prefer the artist make her own descriptions, but I did want to share that you also could incorporate paper doll figures into your work that represent things that we're looking at and putting ourselves back together. I know my collage would will include lots of paper doll people that
you incorporate a scene of some special moment or moments that happened. For example, when I was, um, when we were quarantined here, I did a pie baking experiment. <laughs> so I might incorporate a collage scene of my kitchen and all the different things that I learned how to do pie making um, that during that time. And here is a really powerful piece that Anastasia was kind enough to share. You can notice the torn fabric in the background, but the torn pieces that are putting themselves together, right, to be put together. So um, again, this whole idea of collaging being pieces and also that you don't have to use a scissors to cut things methodically. It's okay to tear as well. And on to the artist Lily Ye, who works in the form of mosaic, another artist I would encourage you to learn more about. And her whole theme in life is finding beauty in broken places. If you Google her or follow her, TED Talks or her website, which is called Barefoot Artists. You can learn more about her processes, but she believes this mosaic um, work. You can see she's using broken pieces here with the children. This is a long time ago. Um, this whole area is called the Village Arts and Humanities in Philadelphia. It was totally transformed. But she says that it's in these dark places, there is the most readiness for transformation. And she believes that when we put things back together, it's like lighting a fire in a dark night. So um, it calls attention to what's there. So here are some photographs from her process. This was what the wall looked like. And the community members just start coming and uh, working on the wall. And this is how it ended up. These are all mosaics. And the people in the community chose these angels from African American mythology, from the mythologies of Africa. Because most of the people, if not all, in that community were. Um, African-American. You can watch him from my bedroom window. You can lie on the bed and hear the ball, the ping ping of it against the street bouncing. You can hear him walk it, run it, and do his perfect hook shot. Bounce, bounce, bounce. Stop the fast no sound of his feet in the air, the ball flying up, pause, then wham, wham against the blackboard, a high bounce off the rim, him whispering, son of a bitch. Him jumping on the corner, him jumping high and turning in the air under the street light with a thousand million bugs flying around going wild, wild, wild. So I hope you will make your statement. Please create something, take your jump shot. Let the crowd go wild, wild, wild. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. It was really wonderful putting it together, no pun. <laughs> um, and again, please contact me M-P-U-L-L-E-N-O-O-O-7 at kctcs.edu. All that information will be available to you. And I'm going to read you one last quote that I really believe if we were to create all these and place them together. Still, after all this time, the sun never says to the earth, you owe me. Look what happens with a love like that. 
it lights up the whole sky. So how about we acknowledge what's happened, not silver lining it, but begin to identify the pieces and start finding unity and hope. So thank you again for coming to this presentation. Please be in me and I hope you enjoy. Thank you for sharing that with us, Michelle. And you're muted if you're there. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, thank you. I'm really sorry about all the, my, I kept getting kicked off of the Collaborate. I, I apologize. I don't know what was happening there. It's okay. It, it's technology. It happens, right? We do what we can. Uh, uh, so, no, uh, it, I, I I'll just hang in there for a little bit to see if we see anything in the chat or. Susan, are there any questions for her? No, she said she was streaming it. I'm not sure. Yeah, um, so sorry, I had to click on the other microphone. There's like 12 going on. Um, anyway, uh, there aren't any questions, but thank you for sharing. Okay. Thank you. And again, I'm really sorry, everybody, about the disconnects. I don't, I haven't had that happen before, but, you know, we're the, the first time for everything the fun of technology <laughs> yes yeah i'm hoping if people want to go i hope some art is created and people will share me too okay i guess we'll sign off then thank you brandon you're welcome it was it was thank you, awesome you. um Looking forward to hopefully running into you and having some more some more talks. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.